Okay, perfect. Hello, friends and followers, and welcome back to a new project. My name is Smo, I'm a German graffiti artist, and this is my sliding paper. Um, I just got a new order, and I will paint the name Dubster. A name that has only great letters except U. All other letters are incredibly good. So this will be a joy. This will be a joy. Dubster. So. I definitely want to have a D with some sort of a swirl. Maybe the U that it is overlapping with the D. I think I already want to change some. I already want to change something. Let's see that we make a rhythm. Good. Uh, I want. I definitely want one such a heart at the bottom of T. So it goes a little bit down. The T, a little bit higher, like this. Okay. So the vertical bar of D. I love I love it when it is just boring. Hello friends and followers and voiceovers Mo is there as well to give you some background information about this sketch. Maybe. Um I'm recently discussing this sketch in the Smo class and I already know that there are some shadows missing at the end. <sighs> I don't know why this always happens to me. Someone is at the door. <sighs> and I'm back. This was the, this was the postman. And I got some uh, stickers for the sticker pack that we are recently working on. Some hologram stickers and um, a bombing sticker with copper effect. Super nice. I will show it to you right now real quick. And that's the stuff that I'm recently working on together with my wife. She's preparing all, all this the um, stickers while I'm sketching. <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, the D is leaning to the right side, mm. the U to the left side. I think U is always... Ah, I don't know, U is such a boring letter. And you have to be so careful if you add something to the U because the U loves to become uh, a J. It loves to become, um, when you put it too, too much together at the top, it becomes an O. Um, U is 
not a letter where you can easily add a lot of extra elements to, like for example, the A or the K. There are some letters that accept a lot of extra elements and some don't. And the U is one of the terrible ones, but the most <laughs> terrible one still is, is V. <laughs> Because you can make a round U and an edgy U, but you can't make a round V. So the V always has to be edgy at the at the bottom. Dub. Oh, this already looks nice. So I think that I will put the S a little bit more down. Down, 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 down. Like here. So that it I decided to make the top part of S open without any serif and without any kink that is going down because um, I want to show that it's leaning to the left side, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we can already Maybe see. I will make the B tiny bit longer, like this. Mm -hmm. Now we can already see two rhythms. Or we'll add the small ending. Now we can see already two rhythms. The D and the B are upper letters, while the U and the S are a little bit lower. And um, D and B are leaning to the right side, while U and S are leaning to the left side. So the T has to be upper and the R as well, and the E a little bit lower. And then it has a super nice and obvious rhythm. And another idea is that the D and the B are melting together and the U and the S are melting together in a tiny point. And if you want to to get some more information about the sticker pack, I think when this video will be available on YouTube, as this one is um, Patreon exclusive, uh, I think uh, the um, sticker pack will be already available on my website. So check out smonova.de to get all informations, to mm, check the shop. Mm. And so on. No, 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 no. That's not the right solution for the E. And as the S was already open at the top, I had to change the E as well so that they look like they're from the same family. They are um, in the same style. So both letters are open at the top. 
Oh yeah, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. <laughs> and now I can find the same ending like here. Sort of a symmetry. Just had a discussion in uh, the Discord server about symmetry. And if it is good to always have a symmetry and I think when it fits easy like that, um, it's cool. But I, I don't. I don't want to force. I don't want to force something to have a symmetry. Make this a little bit shorter so that it leans more to the side. And the R. even longer. Okay. okay. So let's see. I had to change the bottom of S because otherwise um, it would look like a sausage. And I don't like it when letters look like a sausage, when they go around a curve and they don't get thin. They always have to get thin while, while the stroke is going it's through cool. a curve. With a lid and a chip. Okay. Think. You can be a little bit thicker. Because it looks so thin. 
Um, this is something that I always check as well. The thickness of each letter in comparison to the other letters. Because they all should look like if they were made with the same imaginary tool that makes the single strokes. This gives the letters this uniform look. Nice swirl that is growing out of the R. Give it some more action at the right side. This always looks nice. Chip underneath to blow it a little bit up. Uh, there is not that much missing at this Only point. The thing that does not fit that well, in my opinion, is this ending. This is too much around the corner. It's too much bended. Yeah. I agree with you, oh. painting Smo. Good. Mm. Can get a nice chip over here as well for some extra movement of the B. And it would be cool if. But there is a gap, there is a gap. I think it's good. It's good. Let's clean it up. Let's see. where it makes sense to slice the letters. So the D is above the U. Where the U is above the D on the right side. So The B, <laughs> the B is on top of the U. When I do the slicing, I always ask myself which part of which letter is more important and I always try to show the more important parts and the other thing the other parts of the other letter that is covered is underneath so um, I try to, sh to show all edges and all corners Perfect. and always try Top. to overlap or to hide Good. only uh, the middle part of outlines that have no edges in between.
because to identify shapes, our brain needs the edges so much more um, than the outlines in between. Ah, okay. Don't want to run out of power. So my <laughs> smartphone is plugged in now. than the t-bar so the r is on top and the t-bar just slices a little bit into the vertical bar of r like this so This is the E. Now the question is No. 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 How do we do it over there? There are too many layers on top of each other. Yes, there or would be the S, the T I and the E. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> I will do it like that. Do it like that. And now I managed it to have at no point of this sketch I do the chop. three layers of um, letters on top of each other. The other half just does not exist at all. And yeah, this is good. That's the solution. So the most parts of the heart Brilliant. are visible, the E is nearly completely visible, and we even got this tiny I melting point it. between that T and R. Solution. That was a great solution. Okay, I think this one is too short. Make it a little bit longer. Tiny bit. So now I will go with the block downwards, like this. All thicknesses of the block are facing downwards to one vanishing point. By the way, this is probably my most favorite direction for um, for the block, when I do sketches, I nearly always do the, the block downwards because this lifts the whole sketch upwards because it seems like you would be able to look underneath the sketch so it has to be on a 
uh, higher level than you um, who is what uh, staring at the sketch. Yo, so it lifts the whole sketch up. I think I will listen to a podcast and voice of a small will tell you something. Something. If I have to say something, I will tell you. Otherwise, I will be quiet as well. I add the tiny block everywhere where one um, letter is overlapping another one. Really? My wife is printing again. I thought she's not even at home. Crazy. Oh, by the way, this is the other day already. Um, I tried to finish the voiceover yesterday. No, it is eight o'clock in the morning. And I just want to finish this video real quick. But I know that it will take me at least one and a half hours. <laughs> If I just sit here and talk. Dubster. Adding the section lines. to fill some empty spaces and make the letters a little bit more interesting. Hello. Hello. Ah. Tschüss. Hier noch 7,50 Euro. 7,50 Euro. Wow. Tschüss. Okay, my wife is shopping now. Goodbye. Enjoy your shopping trip. <laughs> I thought she was already gone. Just a half of an hour. Crazy. This one was so fast. 
even if it was so many letters. I didn't like the angle of this ending of the S. And the B still looks a little bit thin. These are just some millimeters, but in my opinion, they really make a big difference. And what I really like about this sketch, and if I could turn back in time, um, I would change one tiny detail because the D and the B um, are melting together within you it's not that visible right now in the first lines but they will be melting together within the u um the b and the t are melting together within the s and uh the t and the r are melting together um within the e and the u and the s are melting together underneath B, but S and E are not melting together. There is this gap and it is not necessary to have this gap. The S would be even stronger if it was a little bit more to the right side, a little bit more extended, and it would melt together with E. So always the second letter melts, no, the third letter melts with the first and there's always one letter in between that is... Ah! And I don't, I don't know why I didn't do this. This is like, it is screaming to me right at this moment. But it is like it is, there's always, there's always room for improvement and it will never be possible to paint the perfect sketch, but you can come close. You can come close until you notice something like that. And what I noticed over the years is that when I when I do a sketch and I really try to make everything perfect and I think about everything very long and I erase a lot, most times the flow gets lost. And it looks very um, constructed and not like written. And it needs it needs this tiny flaws. It needs to be some sort of not perfect. Otherwise, it's it the the flow dies. And this is super weird. And I still da I'm still um, making some experiments and trying to figure out what it really needs. Maybe one day I will completely uh, understand the code of style.
No. Yeah, perfect reaction. I wanted to have something underneath the E, and I always try to solve as much problems with the letters themselves, but there all there also is the, the background. And I got the feeling that there has to be something underneath the E, but um, there still is the um, option to paint the background a little bit over the letters so like the letters are sticking into the background like in cracks or maybe there is a hole in a wall and the the style the letters are, are sticking in this hole and some um, cracked stones are in front of the e or maybe whatever some drips are running over it or bubbles and um, there is always the option to change or to give some extra power to some parts just by adding the background. But I try to solve everything as good as possible with the letters themselves. And at this point, I, I knew there has to be something. I didn't want to make an, an extension over there, like a long scab that is flowing underneath the T and the S and maybe ending underneath the U because if it, if this sketch has just one long scap, it needs to have another scap at an, another point to balance it. And so I decided that I will holy macaroni. give the E some extra power with the background underneath. Yeah, oh, and I wanted to go with classic bubbles, but not the bubbles that um, most times are painted. These two-dimensional ones, I want to give them a little bit a three-dimensional look with a three-dimensional shading. And there we got something that breaks this quote-unquote empty space underneath the E and gives it some extra power makes it more interesting. Removing the last bit of eraser and it's time for the outlines, finally. This is the eight, uh, 0 0.8 millimeters Copic Multiliner Black. Recently my most favorite um, huh? outline what? pen. And now look at this. I leave a tiny, tiny little bit of the outlines away so that there will be a tiny melting point between uh, D and B.
but I will make nearly all outlines thicker. But I can't work that precise with a thicker pen. So I make thin outlines first and paint with a thicker um, pen all around it. Because the, the letter, this is super weird as well, because I, I, I did not think about this until I made um, a workshop one day and I told, I told the, um, the students that they should paint outlines all around the letter and they made the lines with the pencil and they painted with a thick pen over the middle of the pencil lines and this makes the letters thinner and this was the moment when I understood that the outline really has to be outside of the letter itself. So the outline, when you paint the outline, you paint it around the letter. And when you make an outline bigger, you don't make it bigger into both directions. You make it, you make it just bigger to the outside of the letter because otherwise you will... Um, change the shape of the letter itself and you just want to make the outline thicker and as a thick pen um, changes its thickness when you press the pen on the paper into both directions it is for me always <laughs> easier to, to make the outlines first with a thin um, with a thin pen and paint with a thick pen all around it because then I have this quote-unquote safety space of the thin outline um, into the direction of the letter. Yeah. If you understood what I was talking about, write something with a turtle in the comments. Small, you're painting slow like a turtle. Yeah, but this is something really interesting to understand that the letter is still the letter even if there is no outline all around it. And if, you, if I would cut out the letters, I would cut on the line between the outline and the white fill-in because this is where the letter is. The outline really is just all around the letter. And the letter is made out of imaginary strokes with an imaginary thick tool. I already thought one day, and maybe I will try it, I will probably, probably try it one day, that it was possible to write the letters with a broom to a wall and just put the outlines all around it. Because if you have calligraphy-based letters, like I have, with a change of the thickness of the letters that is based on the movement of an imaginary tool, you could even write these letters with a re real tool to a wall and just paint the outlines all around it. So you would not need any first lines anymore. And my homie Kier, um, he's making some exercises with it. Um, he tries to uh, paint the, the fill-in first with um, the Montana uh, Ultra White. He paints the fill-in... No, he paints the... 
the letters including the outlines first and um and but this is totally weird he should do it in a different way he should paint first with the montana ultra whites to a wall and put outlines all around it and then everything's perfect but the problem in my opinion about the montana ultra whites is that they are um changing the thickness of the single stroke too much when you change the distance to the wall and this is why i would go with a broom i always have so much crazy ideas when i do the voiceover i will write a note to myself now the broom Oh, die Jungs kommen. Flitz mal nach unten. Können wir mal Part auf der Titanus? Nee, können wir nicht. Das andere Dino-Spiel. Nee. This was my son Oscar. He tried to convince me that we see some um, YouTube videos together now. But um, friends were standing in the garden. So I said, go down. Your friends are waiting. We won't see any YouTube videos together right now. So if you hear some kids in the background now. I will not finish this sentence. <laughs> if you hear them, you hear them. <laughs> At least three of them are mine. But I, I don't really notice it that much when uh, there are sounds all around me. And sometimes I'm surprised that my wife was talking to me and I just did not answer. Because I'm so much thinking about all the tiny decisions that I'm making. And um, they, they just don't notice it when someone's talking with me sometimes because I'm thinking about this one angle. Is this angle right? The angle is more important than you talking.
By the way, I accidentally recorded this video in 4K with 60 frames each second. And I was so surprised that this is just 35 gigabytes. I think I will uh, record all my videos in uh, at least 4K and 30 frames because there are, there are no fast movements. I don't need 60 frames. This is real bullshit and just makes the uploading time so long. But um, just to, to be able to uh, zoom in a little bit. I mean, I could, I could do it like this. And it is still sharp. I mean, um, you, c you can tell me if you want to see more details or if you want to see the whole um, sketch all the time so that you can understand better how one letter um, um, looks in comparison to the others because it's always it's not the single letter it's so easy to paint a single letter but it is so much harder to um, paint a lot of letters in combination so that they all look like they have the same style same appearance now i do the section lines and the deadlines within the slicing the section lines are just um, crossing the stroke of the fill in in um, a 90 degrees angle to the movement of the stroke while the section lines are just dividing one letter from the other and they both are made with the um, 0 0.3 Copic multiliner. And there is an affiliate link for um, the tools that I've used in the in the comments section, no, in the uh, description. But it's just for the Germans. I need to tell my wife that she needs to make this affiliate link, Amazon link um, for the US and some other countries as well. So you can buy the exact same um, tools that I use, but um, I will get a tiny percentage of it. I don't know if this makes sense at all, but at least I want to give it a try. All bubbles will get a outline in 0 0.8 millimeters as well. But um, this outline will, will stay in this thickness while the outlines of the letters will most, most of them will get thicker. But I have to say that I like it more when I can see the whole sketch the whole time. I think it's dis dis 
disturbing to um, to move with the camera all the time from one point where I'm painting to the another one. Oh, not even one hour in and I start doing the fill in. I start with the neutral gray seven of the Copic classic line. Mm -hmm. Ich was essen. Was essen? Wir haben Hunger. Ihr wartet einfach, bis Mama kommt, dann kocht die voll was für euch. Mhm. Ihr macht euch jetzt nichts zu essen unten. Okay. <laughs> My son asked if uh, he can eat something with his friend Leo. And um, I said no. Wait until mom comes because she will cook something. And she made some pancakes for them. And Leo ate five pancakes. He was a very hungry guest. As this gray is really dark, I decided that only um, parts of the blocks that are facing downwards. Um, oh, I thought now I thought now it's ringing the door, but it's in the video. Ah, it's my wife um, and only parts that are really facing downwards are uh, are in this dark gray and I will use a lighter gray for all other um, surfaces of the blocks So I will not go with this classic 3D shading block. This will be more something in between. Okay, I skipped a private conversation between me and my son.
Now you probably ask yourself, if it was not faster, if I would use the other side of the Copic marker, the thick side to fill in um, the big shapes. But as I'm not in any hurry, I just do it with the thin side. It has no bigger meaning that I have some very clever thoughts why I did it with the thin side. It is just like I can I can uh, fill the, the the tiny parts, the tiny parts of the blocks, and the, maybe I'm just too lazy to change the sides all the time.
I think that this is the last shape that I painted in dark gray. And very often I get messages from people who write me on Instagram uh, and put a red circle around a shape and ask, why is this not dark? Or why is there a shadow missing? Yeah, most times it is because I just don't see it while I'm painting. And in, when, I, when I sit here and I just stare how I was painting this dubstep, dubster sketch, I see that the heart shape, the shadow of the heart shape of the T, it should be dark. But I just forgot it. I forget so many things. <laughs> Why is this not dark? Yeah, because I forget it, forgot it. And I will leave it like that. The sketch is still laying behind me and I think it's it's not real. The, the, the tiny mistakes, they have to be there in my opinion somehow. You do it as good as possible in the time that you think you want to finish it or until you got the feeling that you're satisfied with it and when you then um, take a microscope and start searching mistakes and searching flaws and I think this is the problem of our school system because everyone is so focused on finding the mistakes where is the mistake oh okay I found another mistake look you are not perfect blah 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 yeah I'm not perfect, but I'm happy. And I will leave it like that. There is no chance to make it perfect, especially when you get such a big audience that so many eyes are seeing this sketch right now. And I have just two eyes. <laughs> and, I, I, and I have so much in my head going on while sketching this. Please forgive me that I make some mistakes. And don't send me, don't say, send me um, pictures with r red circles. When I make a mistake, when something looks like a mistake for you, probably it is a mistake, yes. I just wanted to say that. Because a lot of people out there are afraid to post and to share and to talk about their stuff and to show their stuff, stuff that they love, because our society is so focused on finding mistakes, showing mistakes and dragging you down. Oh, you think you got something special? Look at this. This is not good. This is not perfect. Blah, blah, blah. I need, I need some tea. <laughs> I think I got too much coffee. I start to rant again. really was T, not P. <laughs> ah, still hot. No, but really, really, I can't remember that I ever, ever got a message from somebody with a red circle and the words I really like this solution or I really like how this letter interacts with this other letter or I really like how this arrow grows out of uh, 
this part of this element or whatever. And I, I think I never got this. It's own, always just, oh, I think you missed something over there. Or, Smo, explain me this. Terrible. It's weird. So if you want to make me happy, please send, send me messages with red circles about details that you really like. We should do this more often. And people always ask me like, uh, how do I handle it when people Uh, show me mistakes and when people criticize my work and so on and I I always think like that day when I paint the perfect sketch when I paint a sketch where no mistake is in there anymore this is the day when it all ends because I can't make it better anymore and even if I am annoyed of course I <laughs> I don't want to make mistakes i don't want that anyone tells me oh you forgot a block over there because this is so stupid yes it is stupid it annoys me but at the end i'm happy that these tiny mistakes uh, happen to me because this shows that i'm still not at the end of this journey because i want this journey to continue as long as possible uh, this 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 helps me this is a way of thinking um That, that helps me um, not to be that annoyed for such a long time. But sometimes it's really annoying, especially when 12 years old uh, people on Instagram <laughs> send me a message that I forgot a vlog. Terrible. Yeah. Just wanted to say that. Um, my wife is talking again because she... Um, asked me if I want something from the supermarket, but <laughs> I was not able to think about what I want to eat that day anyways, when I'm doing a sketch. Mm. Perfect. No, these are the first lines of the highlights of the block, uh, of the highlights of the bubbles. Because um, these bubbles will get my f most favorite fill in effect the cross hatching. Is it really called cross hatching or is it just hatching when you don't cross the 
Single Lines. I don't know if I can Google that. Maybe some native speakers can tell me how these lines are called in uh, proper English. But just to know where I don't want to paint these lines, I make these circles first and I will erase them later. And even if I think, think sometimes that I want to do something different, I always come back to this effect because I like it so much. I do the small smoke with this effect. I do uh, the cr cracked stones background effect with these lines, bubbles with these lines. And I can't imagine to do them horizontally. They have to be vertical. <laughs> Okay, I googled it. It's just hatching. Makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Ah. <laughs> My hand starts to hurt from all these lines. Oh. 
Oop. Done. No. Underneath the D. So I always add a gray shadow to the bubbles. And suddenly they become three dimensional. Sort of. And finally, I make the outlines thicker, outside of the outlines. When I'm done with the thicker outlines, I will give you a comparison. Between um, the sketch with thin outlines and the sketch with thick outlines, because I always think it gives so much extra contrast to the whole sketch and makes it look so much just better. It just looks better. And I think this 10 minutes of extra work are 100% worth it.
when I'm doing these lines, I'm always holding my breath. <laughs> and, and while I'm doing while I'm doing the uh, voiceover, I have real problems to talk when I see myself <laughs> doing these lines. I'm holding my breath as well. Okay, nearly done. Only in the S there's a little bit missing, pretty obviously. Okay, and while I'm erasing, I already prepared the comparison that I was promising you because I wanted to show you how it looked like with thin outlines. Look at this! Thick, thin. This looks so weak in comparison to this. So much better. Yeah, just wanted to show this to you so that uh, you have a comparison between thin and thick lines and that it really makes sense to make them a little bit thicker. And it also increases the difference between the um, thin section lines and the dead lines within the slicing. And now comes the shadow. Uh, 
shadow is always going downwards to the right side a little bit. And I also added a crack effect. To make some big white spaces a little bit more interesting and to give the letters some sort of a texture. We are slowly coming to the stage where um, you really need to be careful about what decisions you still make because you don't want to overstyle it. As usual, greetings to the family. And then I decided that I want to paint every second letter in neutral gray one. This is the lightest gray that we have uh, from Copic. Or is we even got neutral gray zero, but I think this is just white. Or is, is this a color? <gasps> this is a color as well. I thought this is just Nothing. Okay. So I filled <laughs> every second letter with the second lightest gray that the Copic series has. Neutral gray one. Number one. And this helps a little bit to divide the letters from each other to increase the readability.
Yo, and as this is a super quiet moment, I uh, want to use this moment to uh, say a big thanks to my patrons um, who support me each month with just five bucks and who have the honor to be at the end of all videos or in the last 10% of the video somewhere where I think this is the time to showcase your names that you are the glorious supporters. You are part of the Helpy Gang. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they have probably seen this video already in January 2023. funny uh yeah uh, thank you thank you uh to my patrons as i thought that the background still is a little bit boring it could use a tiny bit of more action I added a second layer of um, bubbles and these bubbles always create a white second outline around um, the sketch. So you don't have to paint the second outline in white. You can also just don't paint the space and leave a white line left over. This always looks nice. I haven't worked with the second outline for a long time, but in this case, I just felt like, oh, I want to do it. And if you ask yourself what sort of podcast I was listening to, it was um, a podcast about astronomy and they were explaining how they are able to find 
planets, because all stars out there that we, we can see, they are all suns. And um, because planets are so dark, they don't shine enough to see them on such a big distance. And um, they were explaining how they um, are able to find planets even in other solar systems. Super interesting. I really love to, to listen to um, astronom astronomy stuff. But sometimes I also listen to a graffiti podcast, but only to German podcasts. Um, I can highly recommend you to listen to um, the I Love Graffiti podcast or um, Walls Don't Lie or um, the old... It's so sad that they stopped because I was um, invited several times in the graffiti podcast from uh, Rocker and Kreis. It was called Graph Talk. And there is also Grauwert something, but I uh, somehow I always miss this podcast. But if you know other uh, graffiti podcasts that you love to hear, please write write them in the in the comments. Maybe also um, English speaking graffiti podcasts. This might be super interesting. Yo, da, e, er, dubster. That's enough. That's enough for a tag. I will zoom a little bit out. So that you got an idea of the overall look in comparison to the size of the paper. And I still, still will add a tiny little bit. Oh. Yeah. I forgot a shadow. You forgot a shadow. But that's not the only one. I also forgot a shadow Probably on top. Not the only one. On top uh, of E, there is another one. There always has to be at least one forgotten shadow and one forgotten block. I didn't see any forgotten block, but probably a forgotten block is there as well, somewhere. No, oh, and I add these tiny chips, black chips. Yay! one edge yeah yeah better and I randomly added some lines here and there to the to the blocks Sometimes the sketch tells you that it needs something somewhere. Then you just add it. And for those of you who haven't already, the obligatory reminder, subscribe to this channel, activate the bell, and always know when to stop and not to overstyle your sketch. Good, I'm happy. I'm happy. Whoop. Okay, I will show you the final details. Mm -hmm. 
that's it. Dubster, this one is for you. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you in the next project. Yo.